Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 2, Phyllis Wheatley. If you already know an African-American writer from the early history of the United States, chances are that it's Phyllis Wheatley. Enslaved and brought to the British colonies of North America as a child, Wheatley started writing poetry in her early teens. At roughly the same age as Amanda Gorman, the young African-American woman who read her poetry at Joe Biden's inauguration, Wheatley was emancipated after publishing a book of poetry that earned her widespread praise. As the Revolutionary War broke out, she briefly became a national celebrity by publicly shifting her allegiance from the British King to George Washington, as shown by who gets named as His Excellency in the titles of her poems. Sadly, Wheatley's fame didn't last much beyond the Revolutionary War, and she died in poverty at the age of only 31. It would take nearly a century until she began being widely remembered as a foundational figure in both American and African American literature. Here's an excerpt of the poem for which Wheatley was best known in her own time, to His Excellency, General Washington. Muse, bow propitious while my pen relates, how pour her armies through a thousand gates, as when Aeolus heaven's fair face deforms, enwrapped in tempest and a night of storms. Astonished ocean feels the wild uproar, the refluent surges beat the sounding shore, or think as leaves in autumn's golden rain, such and so many moves the warrior's train. In bright array they seek the work of war, where high unfurled the ensign waves in air. Shall I to Washington their praise recite? Enough thou knowest them in fields of fight. Thee, first in peace and honors, we demand the grace and glory of thy martial band, famed for thy valor, for thy virtues more. Hear every tongue thy guardian aid implore. Anon Britannia droops the pensive head while round increase the rising hills of dead. Ah, cruel blindness to Columbia's state. Lament thy thirst of boundless power too late. Proceed, great chief, with virtue on thy side. Thy every action let the goddess guide. A crown, a mansion, and a throne that shine. With gold unfading, Washington, be thine. For more information about Phyllis Wheatley, go to the link at the top of the page to the Poetry Foundation Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio. 